un caballero. Es un hombre extraordinario. Me impresiona mucho. Pues, ¿sabes que Yo creo que no es tanto el físico, es más bien la personalidad que tiene y todo lo que proyecta. Ya me lo imagino con su smoking blanco, un martini en una mano y un costoso habano en la otra. Provocativo. Atractivo. <risa> Stereophonic Sound Spectacular. Hello there, and welcome to the exciting world of hip. This is a new departure in language instruction for English-speaking people who want to talk to and be understood by jazz musicians, hipsters, beatniks, juvenile delinquents, and the criminal friends. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous allons, grâce à ce disque créé spécialement pour vous, essayer de tirer ensemble le maximum de qualité sonore de votre chaîne haute fidélité. Sit back, relax, and close your eyes. Yes, yes, because I prefer love than hate and deprivation like this, so... Welcome, beautiful and amazing people, on the 127th episode of the Friday Live Agile, which is also uh, the, the audio podcast of the month of September, number 56 of the Dare Real Agile. So once again, if you'd like to help me shine, help me beat the algorithm, especially of those social mainstream media, smash the like button to make me up and the feeds of everyone and i would like to welcome about 20 new subscribers on youtube this is just amazing and i got two 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 little subscribers on rumble but the future it's on rumble open source open platform and i uh, nothing to do about like the, the fracking left and right things please stop with it because they still have also democratic i mean for the united states democrat party type of things as well so don't, 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 don't write me about, oh, you're, you're a right-winger because you, you use a, a free speech platform. Come on, guys. Are you sick or what? Yes, I have nothing to do. It might have for some. But anyway, someone yesterday at the amazing Scrum Beer told me something interesting. And for an ex-bachelor in, sci in political science on top of my bachelor in physics, he told me that like, politics... It's toward solution and militantism. It's toward, ah, forget because it was in French. Politics to solution. Those who want to do politics, they try to bring, they propose some kind of value. I mean, we talked about like, because in French it's so more clear. Because politics, we have the politics and, and kind of the politic as the political science. And we also have the, um, what should I call it? La politique, which is like, you know, what we see, the toxic politic in your organization, for instance, those who go with opinion. But it was like, politic was more, at least when you took it as an organizational model of proposed value and proposed solution, and you try to make an action plan and do it. And and for those who, who make some kind of militantism, we want to militant about something, about an idea, it's more like kind of a radical and uh, it's it's really more subjective in that sense because they just want to impose the thing. And this is a bit of what is going to be uh, the topic of today. Um, for those who are bilingual, maybe you, you watch my French thing called the same. Agile is the new waterfall, like orange is the new black or what have you. Or like a, a group of artists that I was also a manager back in the day in my other venture. Uh, they used to say uh, shit is the new art. Yeah, bold like this. And we're going to see some poo also today because a lot of you won't like what I'm going to talk about. And it was my talk at Agile Boston this very week on Wednesday, the 27th of September. And now we are Friday, the 29th of September, 2023. I'm Alexandre Frédéric Jolie, your coach AF. Bold and proceed. And I'm really happy to be bold but respectful of one another, as you all know. As you all know, my doppelanger, Coach AF, could be rough sometimes, but at heart, I'm always in the capacity of being enough conscious and still learning to be more conscious about using both my left and right brain together 
for greatness. And I'm also always tend to connect anything that I do professionally and personally in my life and this experience we do on earth, connecting my mind and my art to work together. So, you know, left brain, right brain, let's work together instead of creating those militant war, this I want to be right and I want to be wrong. I don't want to be right. I don't want to be wrong today, as I mentioned to the Agile Boston. So here's the thing. Um, we we're supposed to record it because, you know, nowadays after this crisis, after this dark ages of what we went through in 2020, now a lot of things are virtual. But me, I prefer the IRL event like we did yesterday. Just let me, before stumping in into the presentation of asking the question, is Agile the new waterfall or affirming is Agile the new waterfall? We'll see about this. So what I'm... Yesterday was amazing. I think it was really a scrum beer, number 23, at the new microbrewery of craft beer, Le Ciboire in Montreal, just next to Ubisoft office, by the way. So I love my city. I love this dynamics. And they were like, I will say like uh, 60% of the people were their first time at a scrum beer user group on scrum with scrum masters, some, uh, some coaches, some others, uh, IT engineers, some leaders and their organization. So I think that was great. I think people had fun. Great craft beer. Amazing craft beer that they do. My 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 coup de coeur was uh, the triple Belge, triple Belgium beer. Like, And it was nice to end September. A beautiful endless summer September, by the way, here in the Montreal area in Quebec, Canada. And I think people loved it. Um, I didn't see any everything because I was busy this morning. But let me tell you one thing. It felt like the pre-dark age, you know, of that CV-19, uh, like having people together, smiling, laughing, enjoying, networking. So this is exactly the meaning of the Agile Lounge for Business Agility that do professional services and business agility, but it also do free things like this, gathering people together. And uh, I'm really thankful of all the team. Shun, thank you for your help. Elizabeth, also on the marketing side. And thank you for Emmanuel, uh, one of the manager over at Cibois, for this beautiful room, a kind of a private room. It was not expected. We're supposed to be in the bar, uh, in a section of the bar, but they give us a very, very, very nice room. And anyways, if you do event yourself, please contact them. I'm going to put some link in the pine comment after the show. You'll be able to sit by yourself. And I got some beautiful picture to share uh, of the crowd and everything. So amazing. Uh, it's nice to kick off the fifth years, the fifth season. Actually, the exact fifth anniversary will be in November out of Scrum Beer. But uh, I don't know now if if, 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 if my team want to do it without me as the maestro. It could happen because it's every two months. So the next one should be at the end of November. However, I'm going to be in Boston in real life uh, with my family of Agile Boston and Scrum uh, for the 15 Give Thanks for Scrum. If you're interested to come with us, again, a, a link will be put in the pine common for you to subscribe for this magnific magnificent event of giving thanks to Scrum, uh, for Scrum, uh, with Jeff Shotterlem himself, Dave West, Daniel Mizik, and many more uh, speakers. It's a one-day interactive session in Burlington, Massachusetts. So it's about 20 minutes rides from Boston Core. And uh, I'll be there. I'll be there for sure. It's the Thanksgiving week. It's always an amazing moment and time of the year, especially in New England, towards Massachusetts. It's beautiful. I love it. I can't wait for that. Okay, so enough, Coach F. It's been 12 minutes. You ramble. You welcome people. And I don't see that much people today on the board. But I don't care because, yes, it's live because I want to be spontaneous and authentic. And uh, But I'd like also, you know, on YouTube and Rumble, it's always there. And starting next week, the three platform that's going to be live at 12 noon will be X, Rumble, and YouTube. Vafangulo, LinkedIn. I don't care about LinkedIn anymore. And you know what? For what they did this morning, I'm going to cancel my subscription. You see, customer feedback. That's one of the core thing of the Agile Renaissance. And maybe if people and organization and product owner and business owner were listening to their user and customer feedback, we could live in a better world. 
in a more satisfying capitalism. That's one of my kind of thinking right now. I'm openly thinking. So we're going to present you a redux of my talk. It's going to be different because I'm live. I was live there too. But the core of the subject is still, is the question. And also for those who are on YouTube and this live, this Friday, I got a poll in the chat. So you could actually, the poll question is, uh, do you still believe and the um, do you still believe in the promise of agile, like the Americans say? And I get uh, one of my nice uh, subscriber, Ryan Erickson. He said it depends on who's making the promise. Oh, I like it. So probably that's why we have one vote and the maybe. And um, and yes, exactly. To avoid polarization, to avoid binary thinking the war of the left and the right brain, I think, Ryan, it's spot on objective about it depends. But is it depending on who making the promise? So this, I don't know, because I believe that our agile community as a whole, with all of this divergent thinking, all of this offer out there, we might be all responsible of making that false promise. If you're an agile coach, or you call you so like this, if you're an Agilista, like my late mentor used to call us, Agilista. If you're an Agilista, if you love Agile, if you love Lean Thinking, if you love Scrum, if you love those systems for progressing the way we work together, you are part of this maybe issue. Maybe for you, you don't even see it as an issue. You're really pleased with your, like some programmer call and some other stakeholders also call because, you know, for me, it's business agility. It's over and above this uh, software development thing. So anyways, so my reflection, the, the thing here is, is it an affirmation without the verb to be upfront? Or is it a question that I ask to you who are maybe responsible to make it as a false promise? It came out from, okay, as you know, I'm in the agile space or I was in the lean space and with the manifesto in 2001, I kind of swing into the more customer experience because that's what they did. It was a bunch of 17 guys, engineer, programmer, consultant, mostly doing things and software development and engineering, and mostly also having this approach of the Toyotism and the lean design thinking and the lean startup and everything. So that was the kind of the way to push to make the kind of revolution that United States and the West needed to be and to this uh, digital transformation and e-commerce type of from computer programming to software programming with the complexification of the code, uh, the birth of Java, uh, the birth of everything. So, so they needed something to be more flexible. So <laughs> this is the real meaning of Agile. And they were at war with the classical project management approach that a lot of people call Waterfall created in the 1970s illegally by the Dr. Winston uh, Winston Worries, who is also the father of IID, incremental, um, excuse me, yes, iterative incremental development. Uh, but for the DOD, uh, is it, yeah, the DOD definition of done, but it's not DOD in that case of the story of Mr. Uh, Royce was um, <clears throat> for the uh, Department of Defense in the United States, uh, working also with Lucky Martin. Uh, great supplier of aerospace and, and everything. So he did create the two model. He said, for you guys, if it's really complex, and you know the internet was there, it's the army that created it, the US army that created it. So they knew that they need something like to manage their technological projects. So that's why Dr. Royce, he created this IID. Huh? Again, iterative incremental development for the computer programmer over at the DOD the Defense Ministry of the United States. So, but he also says, he said, okay, if your product or if your software or if your tools or whatever you try to deliver is not complex, here's my waterfall type of thing that you could take more time. And especially with the compliance huh, of the C2, uh, control and command in the military that touch also the civilian that works in IT. 
So that's the true story, guys. And and, and by the way, let's let me start sharing my screen because today it's more like a presentation. And by the way, for those who are listening to this podcast, because yes, I decided to put it on my podcast audio. Uh, it's going to be one of the show of this month because uh, it's going to come also with an exclusive audio podcast for this monthly program, 56B. Uh, but so for you out there who are running and jogging with me, uh, don't pay too much attention when I say... I, I want. I will try also as as a guest, as a uh, as a guest, as a host, not to actually um, say too much about the visual. But yes, this is uh, my talk at Agile Boston virtually, and so we have not. Of course, I'm against PowerPoint, so this is not a PowerPoint. But th that was a mirror that. My intention was to be interactive with the group and they could go put some post in and so on. So I apologize for the audio podcaster and sometimes if I reference to things on the screen, but it's for you if you'd like, if you're curious. I know you are more listening audio because it's 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 freer of your time. You could uh, start it whenever you want and you could do other things such as you're jogging as you wrote me. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we, um, we are going to... Uh, make a visual so you could come in at any time on Rumble and YouTube uh, to watch it, to watch this presentation. And it's going to be in, a, in the, the mirror link will be also shared on the description of the audio podcaster. So if you don't want to see my face and redo it visually, you'll be able at least to see this kind of visual aspect that I did on my row on a, on a whiteboard for you to appreciate a couple of things. And there's links, there's links too there that will help you further your uh, knowledge and your appreciation of this observation. It's an IRL observation about Agile is the new waterfall. And we're going to see if we could answer at the end of the show, yes or no. Okay. So let me see here. Agile Boston. All right. So now, and once again, another organization at Streamlab, the talk studio Streamlab, I still call, they don't respect my setting. Is it good like this? I don't think so. Let's do this like that. Yeah, that's, that's better. I think. Tell me in the comment below if you like it like this. So, so basically what happened, so I did open the talks, the talk, sorry. And by the way, I'm not crying. No, Julia, I'm not crying. Uh, my seasonal allergy is kicking like crazy. As I said, we have an endless summer, which is good warm temperature for the beginning of fall. Uh, that looks like summer here in Montreal. And the pollen seems to kick it a lot, even if the trees start to bring the color of autumn. Uh, and I woke up this morning with boofy eyes and stuff. So no, I'm not crying. It's my seasonal allergy. So for the viewer there, don't worry, I'm not I'm not that touch and emotional about this. All right. So um, my story about this is it started in with a team, a startup team of a very, very, very um, what should I call it? Um, kind of very innovative, difficult thing to do in a lab and some of the engineer and the team of startup. And that was back in 2019, 2018. Yeah, beginning of 2019. And they said, <clears throat> hey, AF, we, we, we know you that uh, you did a great job and we worked together at some places and uh, as a scrum master. And, uh, and we believe that uh, our, uh, our new product will require some kind of incremental and iterative development process uh, with the scrum system that I kind of like the experience that I did. I said, okay, so why not? So we bring me to the team, we have lunch and we start talking and I ask a lot of questions to all the other developer and associate of that startup. And the conversation start to be like a lot of people were laughing at it. And remember, this is end of 2018 to start at the beginning of 2019. So it's about five years ago. And uh, some architect and some engineers is like, ah, oh, fuck Agile. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, and uh, that's what we're gonna see. And uh, they literally uh, invented without knowing it the meme that I'm gonna show you very soon 
uh, about this poo. And, um, and so it was a lot, a lot of backslash. And I will say that when I start uh, in 2010, 2011, uh, to be more connected <clears throat> with the product management type of circle uh, and with uh, going back to my family of customer experience that I was from uh, before doing Scrum in 1999. And... And going into other conferences than these uh, Scrum Alliance gathering or these uh, Agile uh, Montreal and Agile Boston and what have you kind of conference towards the Agile space. And I was telling myself, yeah, I'm a, an Agile coach. I'm a business agility coach. And everybody start laughing and sarcastically uh, make a Dilbert comment, you know, Dilbert from Scott Adams and, and stuff like this. And I said, hmm, there's something wrong. And I called Mike back in the day. I said, like, should we um, stop saying about Agile and talk promoting and talk about enterprise crime and business agility instead? He said, yeah, you could try this. But he said, like, uh, we have work to do. That's what he told me. We have, we have work to do because <clears throat> um, we're entering into what Martin Fowler in 2016 will say in Australia and Daniel Mizek even before and between that about this Agile industrial complex and the power of deception that was starting. And, uh, you know, for me, even if I'm bold sometimes and people will think, oh, you're really opinionated. At that lunch, when these serious entrepreneur and engineer were talking shit about Agile and about especially my passion of Scrum as helping those building the best product and put them in the market as fast as possible with the conception of MVP and incremental, with the empirical process and them telling them us that we, we don't care. We don't want to do this fracking waterfall, but hell no, agile, it's even worse. Oh my God. I said, is that right? Is that right? Did we, did, what, what have we done? So that's part of my question here, right? And the blurb, I said like, I said like after 20 some years, what lesson have we learned? Did we learn something? Because right now, and again, yesterday, the Scrum Beer, people were mentioning it. Like 90% of the Agile coach in Montreal are for fraud. They're con artists. They don't know the shit they're talking about. That's the fracking reality. I deal sometimes with clients that I clean up the mess, especially in Montreal, of what other uh, coaches and consultants did. A lot of people are just improvising themselves after a couple of certification at IC Agile, at Scrum Alliance, at Scrum Org, as, oh yes, I'm an Agile coach, but they were a business analysis, they were a developer, they were a designer, they were whatever they good at because they're really good at what they do and they feel, but they improvise themselves because, oh, it's a buzzword, it's a thing. So I think the promise is like when Ryan tell us in the chat, it depends on who's making the promise. So here's the thing. That's why I said we are the community responsible for that. So the 10% of us who are the real deal, who are the real people who understand objectively the reality of what are these system process, okay? To make the team not just feeling better, but deliver better. So because as Michael Armand remind us again on my podcast a couple of months ago, it has nothing to do about doing or being agile. It's about answering the question, are you ready to deliver shit? Are you ready to satisfy your user and customer using your software, using your product, having your solution? Because it's beyond software for me. Let me repeat it again. It's beyond software. So it's about having customer happiness, great user experience flowing and if it's not be open to receive the feedback so that's why i start and and also something i kind of didn't mention during the agile boston because i wanted to respect the value of this institution of agile boston that i praise a lot more than agile montreal by the way because you suck guys it's so your part agile montreal and agile tour and the French-speaking countries that we have the Agile Tour Montreal are part of the problem that I'm going to identify, are part of the fact that I meet engineer, I meet business people also, telling me that Agile sucks and don't bring it to my organization. It could be a lot of things, but I believe that when we say, and we're going to see it very soon, and the uh, talk, like, you know, the uh, adoption curve and everything, I think it's because we were 
entering into an imposition thing of the adoption and posing system upon people without inviting them. So there's no engagement there, you know? So basically that's why, and, and with all of my conversation, like I had at that lunch that I described, that continued to be like, ah, oh. and when I went on the other conference of customer experience, product management, conscious leadership, when I was part of it a lot, when Stéphane Leblanc was still with us, and also the spark the change. Huh? Remember that spark the change thing? And that, that was amazing to me to see that every time I was mentioning that I am a Scrum Master or I am a, an Agile coach or I do business agility consulting, ah, you're one of those guys. What does that mean? Um, you know, you impose things, you, imp you, you impose prescribed things to my employee and I don't like that. And still today, after 15 or 16 years of the state of Agile, uh, that's now owned by a company, I don't remember the name again, sorry about this, but uh, Simplify Agile, uh, Simplify AI, something like this. Anyways, so they do the report every March or April. So every spring, oh, they have this report about a survey they did with a C-level people, manager and other business consultant. Yeah, right. So they still keep the fact that in about 80 countries, they do this. 17% of organizations are Agile according to the response in the survey. So it's kind of the science behind this is like Lean Agile Intelligence Group of Michael uh, Scala, whatever. They're true. They cancel me. Yeah, they cancel me because that's the thing. The Agile movement became a cesspool of wokeness, a cesspool of conventionality. That also part of this problem making Agile the new waterfall. Because instead of listening to your user, your worker and your customer, you pay attention for a fringe part, but at the loud mouth of CIO. Yes, I will say that much. That part of the problem of imposing technological system, the tyranny of framework, like SAFE, for instance, upon the organization. And you as a consultant, you shut your fucking mouth. You don't say anything for why you hire. You don't try to propose anything solution. You don't try to not convince the city of all sweet, but inform them, huh? communicate them, having a moment and explain what's going on and all the benefit of a more agile leadership, a more flexible and open approach with invitation base of Daniel Music and with my agreement base of the agile lounge that could make it something greater and better. So this is why I came to this Agile is the new waterfall. One is the feedback loop from those who experiment on the diverse technique of Lean and Agile, and especially Agile in that case. And also from within in our community of people writing shit blog, talking shit on podcasts, uh, presenting things, this inflation of certified people coming with some sort of knowledge but this is why they prescribe it because they are so non-assertive they lack so much experience of doing it in real life and so they don't have choice to just do the prescription of the scrum guide or this agile manifesto that have nothing to do about a prescription so you have to be a lot more um, interactive you have to be a lot more empirical and this is the i think one of the aspect of this 15 gift thanks for scrum in agile boston this fall on november 21st that i will be there and i invited you to join us for a real a real agile conference not like agile tour montreal that sucks yes i'll, I'll say that much because i'm i'm i'm, I'm sick and tired of adding myself into uh, some kind of politeness we have to call out violation and i'm starting right now and expect, as I said, my upcoming show about, you know, uh, putting um, putting like some kind of good, uh, th this kind of Friday Live Agile where I'm going to calling out and, and show that that's why we, a lot of people think that Agile is a new waterfall because because of this adoption, this chasm, uh, this mass adoption. But first, okay, <clears throat> when I say what make me say that, 
Is it an affirmation or a question? So let's dive into it. So here's, I hope you see it good. Let me just look at the feedback here because again, I want you to have a good uh, viewer and listener experience for those who are on the podcast. So let me just see here quickly and let me maybe, yeah. Okay, it's not, yeah, with the feedback, it's better. So I could see what you see and uh, it, it's kind of better. So let's even put it bigger. Here we go. So some shit I often too much read or hear. So if you are unaware of what our clients and workers experience and tell us, you are part of the issue, guys. Yes, yes, you hear me well. So if I resume and I, if I summarize, waterfall, shit just happens. Agile, law of incremental third. <laughs> so I give the credit to uh, Ed Phil on Reddit. And by the way, when you will have access to the link on the Miro board, then I'm going to keep it open for about a month. You'll be able to click on all the reference link of the creator of any meme or anything. So you see this beautiful graph. Sorry for the audio podcaster. So waterfall, you could see a line from January to November where nothing happened in February, March, April, May, June, and July. But oh, all of a sudden, you have a big fucking third pile of shit in November smiling with two toilet paper next to it after yes of course because they need a lot they need a lot of they don't call it a retrospective and the pmo and the pmi i don't remember exactly so joey please help me what's the name of it again jesus christ i don't remember the name it's not a retrospective but it's kind of a lessons learned and and of course a lot of past oh yeah i love it the past lunch type of reparation yeah it's it's so sequential but anyways and then the uh, <clears throat> conventional agile that some of us call bad agile, those from the three days in an hotel type of uh, goofy satisfaction, uh, uh, self-satisfaction, self-caring of, oh, yes, I'm an agile coach. I'm going to show you how to uh, transform <laughs> from waterfall to, to my bad agile because I don't know shit about Scrum and agile. So... We have the same kind of linear uh, calendar from January to November. So we have nine months, 11 months to provide me uh, that pile of shit as a software or as a product, whatever have you. So now all you see a teeny in March, we see maybe what they will call an MVP, whether it is B or not. It's a small pile of shit. And then in May, oh, it's a little bit bigger. The, the pile of shit is bigger. And then July, August, or September, because everybody's in vacation, it took more time. But but the pile of shit is, is, is getting bigger. And then in November, yes, you have your pile of shit. It's finished. It's finally complete. And you have your retrospective, if you're using Scrum, with this toilet paper next to it. And, of course, the post-launch thing and this and that. And, and, oh, and by the way, the project, it's finished. It's static. Yes. Oh, you're so agile. Tell me how much you understand incremental iterative development. If I take the example, again, of software development. And then uh, our, our friend called uh, Edfield, Edfield 37, he draw a third line in that meme of... What do you call real agile? And I kind of agree on it because it's showing you. So again, you have the, the same line of time, January to November. But now the pile of shit, the deliver shit that you do, it exactly the same size with a toilet paper next to it at every cycle that it's a monthly cycle here. And oh, surprise, after November, the shit and the toilet paper continue forever because it will never be finished because we're going to have new customer. They're going to tell us feedback and we should review our product. We should review the user experience and everything and everything. Yes, motherfucker. Product development, product evolution. So it's product development over project management and it's the evolution of that such product over a transformation of the organization. That's Real Agile. And you are listening to Their Real Agile podcast with your host, co-chef, known as my real name, Alexandre Frédéric Julie, and I'm so proud 
to be who I am and to be surrendered by smart people and to be part of the 3 to 10% that do that real agile with team. And more and more without naming it. And by the way, I'm looking for contracts right now and I do my agile talent, my talent agile uh, workshop to help talent acquisition specialists uh, recruiting the very best scrum master and coaches. And I can help to see now that this agile war word it's being replaced by the scrum word, especially in the Montreal area and New York area. But again, they, they don't understand scrum that much either. And uh, because, especially when I see that they're looking for a project manager, scrum master. So you are, like you see here with Charlie of the Chocolate Factory of the 1970s. Oh, so you are hiring a project manager and scrum master. Hmm. Tell me more on how good you understand scrum. Exactly. And I'm, I kid you not. I look at the RFP board, the request for everything and the job board, and it's full of that shit. Project manager, scrum master, or scrum master coordinator of whatever. And they transform this great, great role of someone who masters scrum to help uncover new way of delivering goods and value to your business, becoming only uh, Atlassian Jira uh, secretary. And that is in Montreal. And this is why I said even Agile Montreal is part of the problem because they don't do anything to go outside of that box. They don't do really mentorship or coaching to help people and their career to stop acquiescence to these kind of ads. We should, we should tell the talent acquisition manager to tell his leader, huh? Stop calling it a project manager, scrum master. Either you want a project manager because you do fracking waterfall or you want a scrum master because you do real scrum. Period. I'm sorry, but we have to say it. We have to tell it. Because otherwise, this agile is the new waterfall will inflate and inflate and it's going to implode. So do your job, Agilista. Do your job if you're a real transformation agent. If you really believe in a new world of work, stop acquiescence to those BS, PC, DIE culture of people who don't understand the power of Scrum and the power of our Agile movement. Okay, I'll say it that much. And another... Another disease, especially in the Belle Province of Quebec with the midnight Putin. Huh? The promise here, Ryan, here it is. We want to be agile and self-manage as a team, says this great soccer player that I don't know her name, but I love that meme. And she received the football ball in her face. And the name of that football ball is SAFE, Scale Agile Framework, which again like we're going to see very soon, everything, whether it's waterfall, whether it's lean design thinking, whether it's OKR product management, whether it's the safe agile and agile by itself, the real agile, everybody don't understand the power of description, the power of a free and open source system process to help you build the best framework for your context. No, those insecure people, those people who are very lazy, those people who don't care about their job. They just care about a title, about being like whatever the fuck they do in their organization. And the consultant is even worse. So what's happening? They impose. They impose their point of view. They impose what they know but they never experience it. And, and when they do this, they cannot learn from others. So that's why I believe that Dr. Winston Royce should be rolling in his grave, seeing what the PMI in the 1960s imposed upon his possibilities of doing one or another uh, between classical project management with phases and sequences and a very simple, fixed, 
non vuca non complex world versus his iid incremental iterative development within a complex project so he was misread in the 1960s and 70s um, and i believe that jeff chatterland ken schrauber and mike beadle are also misread especially when we start having in 2016 the scrum guide because between 1996 and 2016 there were no scrum guide for say okay there was only those kind of cheat sheet about uh, the three artifacts the four uh, the three role, roles sorry and the the four um, the four ceremonies and then do it whatever you feel it's best for your team and your organization it's exactly what i do and people are IP, and I get great comment. If you go see on my LinkedIn and my upcoming new website, also you see satisfied clients saying like, uh, "We really loved to work with Agile Coach AF because of his openness, his keen ear of our context, of our software issue, of our customer issue, and everything." So he really helped us doing something. So welcome people on Rumble. I'm really appreciating to see. Uh, that much people watching on Rumble compared to the other platform. And you know what? I've been cancelled today. They cancelled my event on LinkedIn. So fuck you, LinkedIn. All right. So Dr. Winston Royce. It's really important. It's part of... Uh, and I would like to uh, to praise also one of my colleagues, Michael Dellis, who also do it. I don't know if other do, but when we explain, when we do an introduction, especially to senior manager or to any any level of management, we, we, we talked about Winston Royce. The man who is attribute with being the first computer scientist to formally describe the model, said in his famous 1970 papers, and, and if you are a fucking agilista out there, you have to read these things. And by the way, I will put also a link below of the seven things, the what is agile, the seven things every agile uh, person should know. If you don't know one of those things, you're a fucking con artist, okay? So that paper, it, it's a must read for anyone who is serious about delivering um, an agile evolution or helping people being more agile. So the 1970 paper that it doesn't work, if you're an advocate of the waterfall model, keep reading for your eye moment. And there's a link on the uh, ultimate SDLC for software development um, life uh, cycle i think it is so the father of waterfalls so yeah keep reading and then also one of the co signatory of the uh, agile manifesto robert c martin uh, uncle bob i think they call it uh his paper at the uh, saint paul uh, university the link is there it's a pdf by the way if you click on the link you're gonna have a pdf on your screen so uh spoiler alert but it's a great paper of robert c martin that kind of summarized dr royce on waterfall and iid and he put uh, a more updated way of doing this incremental. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm really tired today in my, my allergic again. So it's IID again. It's iterative incremental development uh, process. And the funny thing with Robert C. Martin, he's, he's the one who forward uh, the book of Ken Schraber and Mike Beadle called Agile Software Development with Scrum. So you could see this is predate that book, but you could see, you know, the evolution of thinking, uh, the evolution of how the empirical process of Scrum will help the IID, and together they work very well. Uh, and this is why you you apply this principle they came up with in February of bringing business and IT working together within those kind of framework system that should be uh, organic. Organic meaning that it's alive. Uh, with new information coming in and information coming out, you should build something on this. It's not static. And one of the reasons a lot of people tell me in those conferences or those meetings or those pre-sales, oh, Hajal is the new waterfall, is not only because a lot of us is imposing it and very badly and we teach it very badly, it's because we are lacking a total um, approach of this empirical process, trying things, stopping things that don't work, uh, listening to everyone, every stakeholder that have a say in such development of the product or what have you. So that's the problem. I think if we start approaching it with a more openness and stop having our ego, 
our, our, our role based uh, type of shit, it's going to be a lot, a lot better. So those two papers, I really suggest you read it. I suggest also to any Scrum Master out there to read that first book on Scrum of Ken Schraber and Mike Beadle, Agile Software Development with Scrum, and do the test, uh, red, blue, green, yellow, green, blue, which is going to be amazing. And also the C2 wiki story on IID versus Waterfall. It's a wiki C2. I love it. It's a history of iterative development. So that's a link also for you to further your uh, intention. So so about now, we, we are still on the shit I often and too often read or hear. And of course, I have to finish with uh, my uh, one of my uh, idol, Scott Adams, huh? who I remind you, one of my favorite quotes of his is, <laughs> loser have goals, winners have systems. Exactly. And I know it's, could sound the tyranny of system science that should be a more unified science with Nassim Ramine, but I'm evolving too. So the funny thing about Dilbert here, and I'm going to read it for my uh, friends who are running with me on the Dare Real Agile podcast, because yes, you are listening to the Dare Real Agile on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, iHeart Radio with your coach, Coach AF, on this beautiful endless summer of September the 29th. So look, this new thing, look, so Dilbert saying to his boss, hey, look, this new agile thing to deal with unpredictable events hmm, and things we cannot control in our projects. And Dilbert continue, we can prioritize, reduce the scope, change requirements at any time and increase the chances of success of the project. And now you see the boss looking at Dilbert like with a lot of intent. And the boss replied to Dilbert, Look, this is your new project with fixed deadline, fixed scope, and fixed quality. You can be agile inside this triangle. Exactly. That's part of the problem. Because Dilbert is an engineer, he's not a coach. And doesn't want to have the help of an Alexandre Frédéric Jolie to help him talk and vulgarize better with his C bus here. It's probably a C-level bus. But we have some hope. We have some hope. Now, if you are reading this, you are part of the Renaissance. And one of the hope is inviting leadership. Exactly. So it's a good segue. The engineer are there that could transform themselves into a coach for a moment or a project manager because that's what often happens with PMI. You're an engineer and nobody wants to manage, as Steve Jobs remind us, and nobody wants to hire business consultant or business manager, whatever. So what they do is they take uh, the more kind of organized and the best communicative engineer in the room and they give him the title of project manager. And so this is why also in Waterfall they suffer a lot. And this is why uh, we do the same with the RTE, huh? remember? It's the release train engineer and safe. It's have to be an engineer. So when I see organization also uh, do a disgusting thing with RTM for manager, here we go. Here we go. We again go into the rabbit hole of things. But the problem here, it's nobody is inviting to do this. It's imposed. You're going to be the project manager, Fredro, because you have a loud mouth and you are really well organized and you know the earned value management because, yes, I want to do profit while we produce this product that won't work in nine months. Yeah, exactly. So Daniel Mizik wrote a book. I don't remember when, though, but the link is there. And um, called Inviting Leadership. And here's a quote from that book that I will encourage you to, to grab a copy. Um, it's the invitation-based change and the new world of work, the real new world of work. So healthy organizations run on good agreements. Exactly. And if Scrum is not implemented properly, then the way decisions are made and who is making them does not actually change in any meaningful way. This means that decision-making continues to be out of alignment with the intent of improving value stream flow. Daniel Mizik, I praise you for that. Uh, writing it, saying it out loud, being part of a movement with you, brother, will be amazing. This movement of 
de Renaissance. Because yes, now, if you are listening to this, you are part of the Renaissance, if you don't quit. And there's another thing, uh, looks like a bit egotistical, but I was very, uh, for me, and Mike Beadle, Mike Beadle uh, really inspired himself and Enterprise Scrum for business agility. And I do too with my next level agility and conscious agility of the uh, great author and independent management consulting professional Steve Denning that had his new book, um, Revisiting uh, uh, Capitalism. But one of my favorite book of Steve Denning is uh, probably none of the other of the... Um, it's not the age of agile. It's a great book, but for me, it's radical management. We have to be a bit radical, and this is very chaotic times. And uh, I posted about six months ago. So um, uh, when he was launching his his new book, reinventing capitalism, and and denouncing himself also this DIE movement of uh, uh, this fakeness of diversity, because there's no such diversity. They just want to level down everybody into uh, the same kind of common woman and men. Uh, and there's no inclusion because they exclude people to include others. And uh, the, the E again, it's for what? Oh, equity, yes. And again, between French, Spanish, and English, it that doesn't have the same meaning. Okay, equity and uh, equality. So anyways, so the thing is, we were six months ago in this kind of debate of at the ESG as well, eh? environmental, social, and governance, that again are being imposed and to organization that have to deal with it and our stupid agile coach go along with the OCM people and they just do what is again described but they make it prescribed so remember this keyword stop prescribing stuff who are described if it's described it's for you to use your imagination so Steve Denning made the launch of this book, Reinventing Capitalists, with kind of these keywords. And I said, we need to talk and activate these concepts into patterns and actions, Sir Steve Denning. More than ever, from now to 2033, this decade is ours or no one's. We are the great split. We will, what will, what will we choose, sorry? And how will we apply the golden rule and live and net live? together and different, from digital ID to data learning uh, or machine learning, if you like, blockchain standard and self-organized and decentralized agile community. So many things could be put in place, including opting out of any system. Don't you think? I receive only three likes, but Steve Denning, reply me, Alexandre, I agree completely. So for me, when it comes from a sage, because I believe Steve Denning is part of the sage of our industry, of our space. And I was really happy to not making a point, because maybe I'm not right. Maybe I will read it in two years with this Renaissance movement that I tried to do. But nevertheless, I think, uh, yes, we have to reflect on this. Uh, because one says is the 21st century is not spiritual, it won't be. And we see it right now, the chaos and the geopolitics, the chaos with any disease and climate and environment and stuff, making us uh, being even more materialistic and being more controlled, more imposed solution, punitive ecology, and people start seeing it. So, and I don't want to be it a war, a civil war, a war between the left brainer and the right brainer, the creative and the innovator against the static people and everything. So, from this agile is the new waterfall, which is, and let me bring you now to the talc, huh? the technological um, adoption life cycle, or is it an hype cycle? Because if this was from uh, my colleague Gutner Verheyen, Back in 2009, he drew this, but it's still relevant today, uh, unfortunately, 13 years after. So I will explain for my audio podcaster, it's really important for me. So this is a graph of um, adoption life cycle, or as Gutnan asked us, is it a hype cycle, especially for the agile movement? And so he positioned, um, uh, so the X's is the visibility that uh, the degree of community adoption 
uh, the agile community and on the and uh, the, the y uh, axis it's more like uh, the sequences so you have technology technology enthusiasts you have the visionary you have the pragmatist or the early majority or early adopter just right away the shaft is about there the shaft sorry you have the conservative which is the late majority so slope of enlightenment <laughs> And you have the laggard with the assimilation and the plateau of productivity. So I really like because it's exactly draw the way I see it, that I draw it myself, but for a lack of time before the conference on Wednesday, I took his and I get credit to him about this. And I loved it back 13 years ago, and I still love it and enjoy it today. So, and then you have uh, a curve, okay, uh, showing you the ups and downs among this agile mindset or this agile movement that's going on. So the early market with the technology enthusiasts, of course, the 17 guys that made the manifesto were there. It's the technology trigger. It's because of technology, the complexity of it, and also the human agency. Because remember, Lean was all about productivity, was all about total quality and uh, employee kind of Toyotism way of work to produce uh, better, faster, and cheaper, okay? And the Agile guys, <clears throat> they came up with, hey, well, hold on a second. Uh, we have to also give uh, a better experience to the customer. We have to listen to the customer because Peter Drucker teaches us that without customer, you don't have a business. And what about the worker who do like us? We are sick and tired of following plan. Uh, so that's why we need to respond to change or following a plan. So we'll be more adaptive. We'll be more agile. So there's the thing. So there, there were, in, in our case, technology enthusiasts, people who were struggling or at war with their uh, process framework of delivering software and more and more complex software and more and more complex technology. So that's why they were the trigger in the early market of this agile uh, manifesto. So we are probably here uh, when I start being a Scrum Master. Probably were in 1998 with the Scrum thing in 1996. And through uh, the XP was there too. Uh, Alistair Cockburn method of crystal something was there too. And so the visionary uh, really uh, came up with, uh, and the visionary after is the Mike Beadle, who were the first adopter of Scrum. Um, Dave Thomas with the Ruby uh, implementation from Japan to North America. Uh, so it's the peak of inflate expectation because at that moment you have people like me who was doing a role of scrum master for three years the manifesto was talked because i was part of news group back then following it on my merc i know it's giving out my age but for those of you of my generation you exactly know what i'm talking about so i was receiving alert on my merc client to go through see the latest news about this debate and the invitation i think correct me if i'm wrong i think it was martin fowler and Jim I. Smith, who uh, arranged the meeting at Snowbird in Utah to make this. So we are there, the early market. Those who were doing Scrum, like me with my engineer team, back then for the e-commerce stuff, applying it, uh, especially into the empirical process with incremental uh, development of an MVP. And so we were really, really pleased to see those guys gathering together and came out with those, we uncover new way of delivering things to customer and help other doing so. Wow, Faber lasted more than the four values that followed and the 12 principles that help us make decisions in two patterns. And so this is why when it's just a sausage machine, an inflation of certified fake coach that cannot teach and form the leader of an organization or a business owner, you have this dark scrum, this dark agile, this agile is dead, People don't get it, and now it's the new waterfall. It's even worse than what these technology enthusiasts and visionaries, like I am, we tried to do 23 years ago. So, according to my colleague here, uh, Gotter uh, Varian, he says uh, in 2009, that 13 years ago when he drew this, we have a drop. After the peak of inflated expectation, people were more and more doing it. And remember, this is still the early market. Yes, the first eight years is the early market. So <clears throat> Agile 20, 2007 to 2009 with the crisis, with the upcoming of the blockchain uh, revolution as a protocol of securing the data, which make also the Bitcoins. Huh? Why are these years? So that was like the moment of the chasm because there were an acceleration of finding solution 
uh, to many problems and to many businesses to stay in businesses. Okay, uh, but unfortunately, when this through of delusion men happen, this is when the papers start happening. This is when the AIC uh, Agile Industrial Complex probably start happening because I remember Michael Orman, my friend. Daniel Mizek start being Scrum Master around 2006. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but in Agile Boston was created in 2007. Um, Agile Alliance uh, was created with Scrum Alliance after the manifesto to all these years. But now people were within the early market to the Shasm, and the Shasm probably happened there in 2010. With also uh, my meeting in 2010 of Mike Beadle. Uh, starting to work and reinstate his enterprise Scrum from back in 2000 and the architecture of subsension and subsension hierarchy. And as I am a dropout of physics, I get along well with him, who is a PhD in physics. And that was just nice. So, so 2010, 2011 is the chasm, about 10 years after the manifesto. And uh, the pragmatists, the early majority, uh, start happening and the BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, the McKinsey start creating those agile transformation office, the ATO bullshit. And this is why uh, I think uh, I remember talking with him in Berlin, uh, Gartner, Varian, he put this gorilla. But what is that gorilla? The gorilla is both the uh, bulldozer of Scrum, of Lean and Agile, the imposition symbology of make it happen. And the tornado of you do the fuck n'importe quoi, as we say in French. You just do whatever you've learned in three days in an hotel. And you think you're pragmatist because, yes, I'm responding to the CIO, the CTO, who asked me to deliver twice the work and half the time by pressuring my team. Congratulations, motherfucker. You're part of the affirmation that Agile is the new waterfall. You see? And I will say that decade of 2010, all the way to this uh, dark time we are in right now, this dark ages of continuous pandemic, climate change and war all together, this triad of disgustingly, collectively geopolitic VUCA on steroid, that bring it to the mainstream, main street, sorry, and now the conservative have taken over our agile ideas. It's the late majority. Everybody's agile of the sudden on LinkedIn. Everybody knows shit about agile. I'm a startup. I'm a business owner. I don't need a scrum master because I know scrum, but you don't know scrum because you prescribe it to your team and you want your team to obey you uh, and you mimic the government and the institution to impose you stuff, to remove you from the equation of the free choice. You uh, centralize everything instead of giving open space over safe space of people creative to came up with ideas and respect their autonomy, respect their expertise, that they pay a lot. In the United States, they pay a lot for the diploma at MIT. You hire them and you tell them what to do and you're just a schmuck manager. Come on. So that's the main street. That's where we are since 2020 with the conservatives the conventional Agile, and when you go to a meeting at Agile Montreal, you just fall asleep, hearing fucking bozos telling you not what they know, not what they did, not the experience, but just regurgitation of the main street paper of those big firm, including Deloitte, including all that bullshit that you could read in some magazine, and they don't know shit about anything. Or they went to a conference, they come back to the office, and they act as the CEO. Oh, let's do something else. And this is full of distraction, no opportunities. But they will tell you that that distraction is opportunities. So we are in the slop of enlightenment. We are in a dark age, not just of agile, but of our entire society. And uh, the last three years, and I see it in my story I told you, in my lab in Tulum for innovative AI, innovative machine learning towards a better blockchain, uh, decentralized digital ideas. So this is not an adoption life cycle. With the gorilla, the tornado in the main street and the conservative out there, the revenge of those who don't want change, who just want 
to keep their control, they, they, their power. They don't have authority, they just have power. They don't want to share authority with open leadership. So you have this hype cycle. You have this money-making machine of the agile industrial complex. And you reach the plateau of productivity, which means that that's why I could return you to the poo. Whether it's waterfall or this bad agile, you just deliver shit. But one looks incremental, but it's not. And, and so on. So finally, guys, <clears throat> I will go through this um, uh, target dart, uh, dart play that I wanted to do, but I didn't do for some reason because we were more interactive and talking to, to each other. So I said, why not? But the dart is, you see, uh, sorry for the audio podcaster, we'll describe it. So in the middle of the dart uh, target circle, you have <clears throat> um, uh, the blue dot. And the blue dot is basically... <clears throat> for anyone who wants central planning, who wants centralized things, or even using Agile as waterfall with a central plan. And I, I, and I laughed when I'm meeting organizations, they say like, oh, they, we do an Agile transformation to, to have people doing more Agile thing, but they actually do their Agile transformation plan into a Gantt chart, yes. And I, I discovered that the Scrum Master are using a Gantt chart or MS project uh, to uh, and so every every phase of the project is a sprint. So I'm just amazed. So this is central planning. This is centralized ideas. This is the left brain dictatorship. This is what you have. And then the inner circle after this target circle. And I said, okay, I made it on purpose. The centralized target, okay, it's there because ninety percent of us motherfucker agilist out there. Instead of informing the leadership, it's not the right thing to do. Everybody is pushing for centralized stuff. So I'm not saying that we have to do this. I'm just saying that that is the unfortunate base reality. I'm not giving you a fairy tale here. I'm telling you the fracking truth. So that's why it's the target. I'm not saying that we have to aim this because I want us to aim outside of the circle. So in and, and the mid-range of the circle, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a light green that I call subsention or subsemptive hierarchy. And I will put again the link of Suryu and um, Deniz, who had a great talk about subsemptive hierarchy and robotics that could help us to scale agile if it needed to be scaled in a good manner. Okay, so the subsension hier hierarchy is something very circular, very open. Uh, very uh, incremental in thought and helping people to uh, really understand the value of the inspect and adapt. All right. So it could be centralized, decentralized, distributed. It could be any shame, any shame like this scheme. Sorry. But at least it's open. At least it's not imposed. It have to go with Daniel Mizik invitation base and my agreement base approach. And then, of course, the uh, other circle the divergent circle, the green, huh? the green, uh, the dark green, it's about decentralized. And that will be a subject of an upcoming podcast. Is decentralization will save our civilization? That's the question. Start thinking about it because I might want to do a panel on this. I don't want to talk alone. And of course, there's a quadrant in this target circle of adoption cycle patterns. So on the upper left, you have the early birds or the adoption that I just described with the, the Gartner uh, adoption life cycle. And uh, this is a kind of a green light because this is where everything is possible. And if we go back to the source, if we go back to the original, sometimes it's teaching us how to not reinventing it, not reforming it, not agile modernity, not agnostic agile, not of all these bullshit. No, it's about new ways common sense that you have at the uh, on the left of the square and the, the circle in the square where you could use invitation base, open space, openness, agreement base, autonomy, subsension hierarchy, and so on and so on. And if you want to go to the right side, on the upper right, you have the chasm. Or when the chasm happened, unfortunately, you could turn like we did in the Agile movement with a gorilla who will impose like a bulldozer a mass adoption and democratization. And when that happened, and by the way, it's not just for Agile, for anything. I could even tell you the story of the Tam Tam Jam in Montreal. That was the same. 
Uh, when it's coming massive, when more people are using it, we have more interpretation of it. Uh, this is the chasma. Unfortunately, it's diluted. And um, I think we are really right there now in the last 10 years. And of course, the um, underdog uh, on the right side, the, 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 the lower right side is imposition, the tyranny of framework and practices without any value or principle to back it up. So my friend, I think that's about it. I'm a bit longer today because it's passionate about this. So tell me in the comment below what you think about it. Could you, could you answer the question like Ryan did about uh, is, uh, is the agile promise of a new world of work for employees and uh, satisfying, um, satisfying customer, uh, have we reached it? Are we there yet? Or do we do, do we have to do a renaissance? Because if we're in a dark time, I really want to invite you with Daniel Music, with the Open Leadership Network, uh, with new tribes that we could build upon. And it's also your duty. You are responsible to talk your truth, to be authentic, to provide the objective answer, the objective reality. Stop being egoistical. Stop being, let go of your ego. Like I do, and I'm working on it. And because as the mass adoption of agility become the new convention to that question, it's yes. So the new static compliance can no longer make agile a beautiful thing can no longer make this world of work a beautiful space if you impose hybrid work remote work whatever so we have to stop imposing things we have to stop thinking of others as they should obey because i'm the business owner i'm sorry sir but as your first objective since the 1950s we learned from peter cruder is create customer if you want your customer to be well served but treat your employee at best and that's the thing Right now, we see the turnover. It's really high because people want to go where they treat it best. And stop lip service us with your DIE. It's not the way. The real way, it's a better open leadership, conscious leadership, and bringing these agile original idea of the four values, 12 principles, into action. Use them as guide to make decisions together in a continuous circle of evolution. That's my message. That's my invitation. Tell me in the comment what you think about it, wherever you are listening to this. And I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. And I hope you'll teach me something in the comment below as well. So on that, beautiful people, again, remember who you really are. You are beautiful. You are powerful. And you are free to be whoever you want it to be and to do whatever you want it to do in respect of one another. Happy weekend.